Welcome back to The Watch. Um, if you enjoy the, this video, which we're going to get into, firstly, I just want to preamble and yes. say, like, um, subscribe, do all the good stuff you can do to help us get through with the algorithm um, so more people can see and enjoy this content. And as well, if you're able to, Patreon, subscribe star helps us become more self-reliant and less reliant on the algorithm, which is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, YouTube, ago. they've been doing shenanigans. They've been uh, actually uh, deranking content that is not meeting not only their agenda, but what they want to be pushed into the mainstream, which means content like I make on Shadowversity and Night's Watch, they, they don't want that around. And we would, uh, we would be like, okay, fine, there are platforms that we'd happily go to, but we can't sustain ourselves on those platforms at the moment. We do want you to watch here. Here, but if we can get our Patreon subscribers our support up to be self-sufficient, mm. that would solve so many issues. If everyone who watches us just was able to donate a dollar to five dollars, that would be it. Support means a lot, and thank you to everyone who is supporting us. So before we get into, well, no, we are getting into it. We're getting into it. We're now. getting into it right now. Okay. But but this is the interesting thing. So Nathan has been enjoying something that I kind of might even try it out because I see I see signs and uh, and watch things from the same source mm. that um uh, is, that's actually really good. Yeah. So tell us a bit about it, Nathan. Well, there, there's this thing, uh, this place called Korea. Mm -hmm. and that's a country. That's a well. There's two countries. Yes, north yes, and south. yes, yes. Uh, we we're talking about South. Yeah, Korea. South not, Korea, not the North Korea. Yeah, I don't know about their media. It's probably just all <laughs> propaganda. Um, but South Korea. So when I got married, my wife told me about these things called K dramas, which are just Korean drama TV mm -hmm. shows. Um, and at first, I was like, "Oh, great! Just, they're just <laughs> chick flicks, basically, <laughs> with subtitles." So when I watch it with it, I can't do anything else. I have to read the subtitles to know what's going on. Where you know, when we're watching other things, I can play on my phone. I can yeah. do the computer and other stuff. No, you got to sit down and watch these shows. But I tell you what, Shadow. In between watching Halo and Kenobi and Wheel of Time, <laughs> I would go home and we would watch just Korean shows. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how with... Uh, there's so many things that are so much better than them. And I realise that <laughs> Hollywood is this little bubble mm -hmm. and everything that comes out of yes. the American media and, and oh. Hollywood, it, it's a bubble to itself. And when we watch it and we get so confused and annoyed yeah. at it, it's because they're just in this little bubble of what they think is correct yes. and right. And that Hollywood is obsessed with trying to make the world reflect what it is like. So Hollywood has this weird microcosm culture in and of itself that exists between the actors, the people that, who are all involved in it, from the producers to, to everyone around it, that have this warped and twisted just degenerate lifestyle well, most of the time. Like, can you hear about this crap? We're actually going to do a video on it, depending on when it comes out, about the life world kind of view of this Hollywood bubble and how just awful it is. And that's the world that they, one, think exists broadly, but they also want to promote and make reflected in the media that they put out. Mm. And you see that if you, like, like, Western media is just... And Hollywood, I use that as a kind of a euphemism to people who don't really have principles and have great luxury and privilege and have money to just spend on pleasures and stuff. Um, and and so a lot of people in the entertainment industry fall into that. And so this goes for people who are working on Netflix stuff, Amazon stuff. It's all that. But media that's made outside of that bubble, well, it's a completely different thing. We, like, anime is still making some shockingly based stuff st st at times with great heroism where... You know, guys act like girls, girls like the girls. It's fine for guys to be attracted to girls and girls are appearing, you know, sometimes in very pretty things. It goes too far with anime, by the way, at times. So I'm fully on... I, I There's a line that. and they always There's, cross Yes, they always cross that. But they're not corrupted by this woke crap. Mm. Um, and Korea has been kind of a surprising thing yeah. more lately. Okay, people, we always talk about Netflix and how mm -hmm. they're making bad decisions. Yeah. The reason why I stay subbed to Netflix is mm -hmm. because of all the Korean shows that Netflix <laughs> publishes. They actually fund mm -hmm. these TV shows and movies, and they're fantastic. They're so good. Yeah. And I'm talking about shows that I would not watch otherwise if they were English, whether mm -hmm. that was in America, Australia, England. They're shows that wouldn't interest me. But the way that Korea is able to tell a story, mm -hmm. invoke themes, have emotion... And just the values of the show. Like, if it was in Australia, I know that, you know, 
they'd, they'd be getting drunk all the time. They'd be swearing a lot more. <laughs> they'd be more slipping around because that's what is in our culture, unfortunately. Because there is also problems with Western culture that, and I feel Hollywood has been quite instrumental mm. but maybe not even but just influential yeah. in pushing western culture to reflect more of what that bubble is like yeah. and western culture more, even more broadly has fallen prey to this I'm gonna do a more, another video just on that and you're right you're right yeah. I, I i actually feel there's failings in just broader practices of western culture generally mm. but then we don't see that in other cultures like korea yes and so I, th I haven't watched too many um, action flicks or more intense, violent things because unfortunately my wife, well, she couldn't even do our pain. That was a bit too much for her. That, that is unfortunate. Um, but it's allowed me to see a different uh, form I, of media. I will like pause there because some of the action stuff that Korea is making is also phenomenal. So mm. I, I really enjoyed um, Squid Game. It's a Korean, you know, uh, thriller um, on Netflix. And really I've heard great reviews of some very high action things like, like Train to Busan, which is a, a zombie film. It's supposed to be great. Yeah. It's on my list. Great things are being said out of the stuff that Korea is making. And what's real again, I want Nathan to tell me now about is K-drama as well. K-drama is... I don't know if it's just because I, I grew up with four sisters and so I had to... <laughs> I, I, I had to physically not play with dolls growing up because that's all the toys that were around me because my sisters just moved out. You had to grow a tolerance. Yeah, for exactly. I had, to, I had to watch, you know, Hilly Duff a lot of, like... <laughs> that wasn't even the best. Oh, this is the first I've heard that. <laughs> like... I, I'm I, so sorry. I watched didn't. Twilight. Okay, I know you like Twilight, but... I do I, like Twilight. Twilight's I, great. I don't, don't fight me. Twilight's awesome. I didn't necessarily enjoy it, but I would okay. watch it because I mean I could stay up late and eat ice cream with my sister because uh, it was family bonding time, and so <laughs> I put up with stuff I wouldn't usually enjoy. But oh my gosh, these K dramas, Shad. Okay, I, I I need to pause and okay. just talk a little bit about. I think it's wrong to th say to shame boys in in what they naturally like. I think mm -hmm. it's perfectly boys should be celebrated that they love the action hicks, flicks, they're either the dumb ones like, you know, Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or um, Fast and Furious movies which dumb, crazy, the top action. Great, go to town. I also think it is healthy for boys and men eventually to actually grow to at least gain an appreciation and understanding of female-centered media for the value, because there is actually great things in it. And I've been exposed to more, well, the, so the female media that I was exposed to growing up with, with you know, my sisters, I've got two sisters, um, were like, uh, yes, there was a little house on the prairie. Um, uh, what's the girl? She's got the red hair. Anna Green Gables. Anna Green Gables yep. was a big one that my sisters loved. All the Pride and Prejudice stuff. I couldn't get, I, Pride and Prejudice I actually was particularly resistant against because I found it so boring as a kid. But then... For school, we needed to study Pride and Prejudice, and this is actually really positive, because Pride and Prejudice is unironically one of the best well and most well-written works of literature, period. I'm not kidding, like, um, um, uh, oh, what's my, the author just escaped me. Uh, just Jane. Jane Austen. Yep. Jane Austen's command of language and understand just the way that she puts prose together is incredible. And I think it's a byproduct of the time she, she lived in, but also her understanding of people is amazing. And now me as a writer and author, I look to her to try and learn from the quality of her writing in the way that she was able to write characters. It's incredible. And that's why her books are so good. Her books are about people, characters that feel so authentic and real. And in, and then yet they, she paints this incredibly authentic real world of the time that she lived in. It is one of the most valuable works of literature, period. So I put Pride and Prejudice there with Lord of the Rings, like in terms of valued works of literature in the English language. Um, and so it was really good that I got exposed to that. Mm. Uh, and then when I married my wife, of course, my, she's a girl. She's loved heaps of like, um, as it Regency period stuff. And, uh, and I was gonna, I was gonna, I was the dutiful husband. I wanted to do what she enjoyed, and so uh, uh, soon after we got married, she wanted to watch a lot of female stuff as well. Funnily enough, and so I think there's like there's one. Is it North and South or something like that? Um, but we watched a lot of like Regency, old school, mm -hmm. romantic kind of dramas and stuff. And uh, this is the reality, though. I actually need to put effort in to enjoy them because it's not stuff I naturally enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and. 
I watch media where I don't need to put an effort. I can relax and just go with the flow. And, and, and so media that I need to put effort in, of course, is not my cup of tea. But I'm glad I have done because it's actually broadened my understanding of literature, of story, of character, because some of these stuff is actually is just really well made. And I'm a better writer as a result. And, uh, there's some re and so I do think it's really good and healthy for boys to get an appreciation for female media. And then you get, like, just works of utter unassailable mastery like Twilight. <laughs> Edward's hot. <laughs> I'm, just, look, I'm just saying I'm Team Edward, okay? Not, no, sorry, it's not hot, but Edward had the masculine protective instinct to protect his wife, to protect his unborn child, to, like, he was a self-sac... Like, he got a bit dumb, granted, but it was... You can understand where he comes from, okay? And look, Jacob's all right. <laughs> but Edward's better. <laughs> yeah, Jacob has abs, but you know. Edward, Edward sparkles. <laughs> Sparkled, everyone. Sparkling vampire. Sparkle. <laughs> so, it's good, <laughs> in some ways, to develop an appreciation for female-centered media, and yeah. I wanted to echo that, but I'm not saying boys should be forced to enjoy it and they're not and for me mo and this is the reality for me and most boys they're not naturally going to because even still i like what could i eat pride and prejudice is objectively a vastly superior work to star wars hands down yeah star wars is awesome and i love it way more and i'll enjoy it more every time watching it <laughs> hands down okay it's just funny because my wife hates star wars <laughs> And she would do anything to watch anything else. <laughs> but I, I'm the same, Shad. I will watch episode four, A New Hope, every time. And I'll have the same feelings every time. <laughs> it's, just some, it's just something about it. Yeah, they, look, it's, it's really, there is boy-centered media and girl-centered media. And by the way, boys love it when girls are into the type of media they like. They are like the special, you know, jewels of existence that we dream about. Just... It, 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 they're few and far between, okay? And the fact that modern day is trying to say, girls love Marvel, love Star Wars as much, we'll make you the characters, uh, female characters that you can relate to and everything like that. It's like, it's like they're trying to shame that there's something wrong with traditional media that girls like, and they're wanting it all into the guys' media. And it's like, just let people enjoy what they want to enjoy. Mm. But as a result, the male-centered media is beginning crap because they're not catering it towards men anymore. They're Mary Sue female characters. And everything. I love, we love action hero female characters, but oh no, you can't make them sexy because that's objectifying and stuff like that, even though they're happy to objectify the men all the time. Thor, recently. Flick. Flick. Flick them too hard. Um, it, it's all crap nowadays. But there are other media where it's fine. And so this is an example, I guess, of more female-centered focused media that you've yeah. been watching, but you, ha you have been developing I, an appreciation for. So, like, I wouldn't even call it female-focused. Like, I yeah. think it's female-focused in the sense of it isn't action-based. Okay. It is drama-based. Good point. Good point. Because guess what? Downton Abbey um, is amazing. Downton Abbey is great. It's actually... For, for some odd reason, I found it more watchable. And maybe because Downton Abbey is not necessarily about the love story drama, where mm. Pride and Prejudice is, it's a love story. It is like total rom-com, but done well, <laughs> basically, right? Um, the classic true rom-com, right? Uh, Downton Abbey isn't that. It's actually more drama focused, right? With like, ah, oh, Mr. Bates, what a friggin' Chad. Like, I, I watch that show for Mr. Bates, Mr. Bates, friggin' love Mr. Bates, right? And so, guys, yeah, I agree. drama actually can be really, really good. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't, and it's not necessarily female or male. And uh, hey, throw in some some sword fighting. I, I that will raise it to another. Is that sometimes that's all we need is a sword fight. Just sometimes you need a sword fight. Just okay. a few swords. Scarlet Pimpernel, Sinkmere, my lady's a poet. Sorry, you, you need to watch the Scarlet Pimpernel. That's <laughs> it's got a sword fight. That's like there's so many versions of the Scarlet Pimpernel though, uh, and uh, I like. It's the version where Gandalf plays the bad guy. Okay. That's the great version that I watched and I've loved and it's got a great sword fight at the end. And I was like, ah, this movie's saved. <laughs> oh, it was all great. It's so good all, all across the board. Anyway. But it was great because of the sword fight. Yeah, sword yeah, fight. Like, sword fight. If yeah. you just throw in a sword fight... Shadow, give it 10 out of 10. It, like, drama is just... It, like, 
it, you, you have something that was like, is it guy, it's a bit for everything, it's just a drama, throw on a sword, fight, guys are freaking there! Mm. It's true. Mm -hmm. It is. Now, these two shows I want to talk about, unfortunately, don't have sword fights. Mm. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I haven't watched mm. the sword fighting ones yet. Okay. They're on the list. <laughs> um, but there's two, and I think if you, if you just want a good story and you're sick of, of Western media, you should watch them. And it's Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha. <laughs> name is... I know, I know. <laughs> but it's... it's Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha. Cha -cha. That sounds like some lewd, dirty can-can. <laughs> <No. laughs> like it is the most heartfelt, tear-jerking show. Um, and the one we're watching right now is called Startup. Startup? So it's about... Um, Oh, people okay. starting up a business and stuff and there's different connections everywhere. It's funny, my, my wife, she looks at certain things for the shows for mm -hmm. her to get engaged and she wants a good, she likes the, you know, the romantic mm -hmm. triangles, yes, the triangle, you know, he likes her, she likes mm -hmm. him, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's some drama. It's kind of like, that's like the female fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Multiple like, guys are crushing on the girl and the yeah, girl's yeah, yeah. like, just envision, that's me. It's like, yeah. so desirable. I like the high production value. <laughs> that's what always gets me on when it's got a nice bokeh, really? a nice blue in the background, when it's all cinematic. I'm like, all right, I can put up with this one. I bought a big 4K TV for a reason. Ooh, ooh. Um, but, oh. The thing I love most about these Korean dramas is that every character is important. <clears throat> every single character. <clears throat> there are no throwaway characters. And I'm guessing well written and rounded as well. So, and <clears throat> no one, there, there are a few villains or bad guys occasionally, <clears throat> but a lot of the main cast, although they have flaws and do things <clears throat> wrongly, they always tell you why. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, there's this one character in the first one who, she's just this big, gossipy girl that goes around and tells everyone everything is just makes problems for everyone <laughs> and this character who's moved into the town says you know why is she so annoying why is she like this mm -hmm. and you get a whole background story of why um you know her daughter had cancer she mm -hmm. had to go through the struggle with not being able to control and help her and so after her daughter left she wanted to be part of everyone's lives and try to help mm -hmm. them and so the reason why she's being so annoying it's because she's, look at you that, know... That, look at that consistent through line there. That's yeah. actually a really great justification for like a gossipy... She wants to be involved uh, with everyone's yeah, life. Like, and it's also... It builds a sympathetic kind of thing. It's like... All the time, Chad! <laughs> I watch this show! And I go, oh, I hate that character. Next episode, here's their dark backstory why they're like that. And you're like, oh, now I'm rooting for them. <laughs> Without failing. Oh, that is... Look, that has, that's good writing. Yes. Like, if you could pull that off as a right, that's... That's sheer and talent. The one we're watching right now, we're at the pinnacle. So, <laughs> the basis of the story is this: this girl who, um, in a happy family, basically, mm -hmm. but the dad, he wants to start a business. Yeah. And the mother's like, no, you'll lose money, just stay in your steady job, and that'll be mm. it. If you, hmm. if, if, if you quit, I'm divorcing you. Like, well, I'm already intrigued. I genuinely, because, like, that already has themes that kind of resonate me with me a bit more just as a man. Like, yeah. like you know, you're, you're a father, you want to provide, but you also have your dreams and you want to try and push and build to greater yeah. things. Like Daughters actually go to his workplace and realise that his boss is really abusive. Mm. Just as like, you know, you guys are all peasants to me, I'm going to disrespect you mm -hmm. physically abusing him and stuff. And so yeah. the daughters are like, okay, if dad quits, we, we see why he'd do it. It's not just because mum mm -hmm. said so, it's because mm -hmm. he's in a bad environment. Um, and so eventually, <sighs> yeah, understanding a father's position as yeah. well. Yeah, like, and this is, this is tugging on my heartstrings now. <laughs> this is it. This is the setup, Shaz. This, is, this setup. is like not even getting to present day. So what happens is he quits, mm -hmm. gets divorced, and the mum says to both the girls, "Choose you want to be with, me or your father." Oh. And so um, it's the dad, his mother. So they're living with the the grandmother mm -hmm. and her. And his dad has this great idea, or her dad has a great idea in like early 2000s or whatever, basically Uber Eats. Okay. Yep, but yep. back in the day. So mm -hmm. it's a decent idea. He's trying to pitch it. And he goes to these investors and says, uh, you know, I want to build a, there's an amazing line, the whole premise of the show. The investor he goes to ends up being this really successful entrepreneur that starts the whole startup base in this area. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she did that is because of her dad, who said that I want to build a life for my daughter, um... Because I, I fall on concrete, I fall on hard times, mm. and there's this analogy where he said, you know, one time his, his daughter was on the swing, but she'd always fall off, and so what he did was he put sand on the ground, so when mm. she fell off, she wouldn't scrape her knees. I'm gonna do that mm. for my daughter with this business, you know, mm. I'll have all the he heavy hits and bruises, so that in the future she can just fall mm. in the sand. And the entrepreneur's like, oh, that's amazing when they start mm. this start thing. But what happens is the dad dies, 
Don't give too many spoilers. No, this again. Okay, okay. This is the setup. This okay. is still the setup. This is still the setup. <laughs> Holy crap! This is the backstory of why why the main character is where she is because mm. her she's stuck with her dad because she mm -hmm. wants to to help her dad go through with that. On the way to invest a meeting, he gets hit by a car, but. <laughs> He powers through it, so he gets mm -hmm. hit and he goes, oh, I'm fine, goes to the, the pitch. Mm -hmm. They say, great, come back in a few days. And because he didn't go to the hospital, he dies from all the uh, bruises and stuff. And so it, it's just her um, and sorry, her grandma. It's just such a so massive self-sacrifice. And, yeah. so, and it's also so true to the male mentality. Yeah. It's actually statistical that men don't go to the doctors vastly more often than women and just try and brush off sometimes serious stuff. Yeah. It's just... It just rings true. It's like... It, that, again, this is still the setup. And, so, and, and the reason he was willing to do it was for his daughter. Yeah. For his daughter. Because he's like, <laughs> I've got to... She support, and she supports him. The whole thing. She's mm -hmm. pitching ideas, saying this and that. And he goes, oh, great idea. All right, let's incorporate that. And mm -hmm. they're getting all excited. And so he passes. And there's all these... Oh, like, I would need a giant whiteboard to tell you all of the... Like, and this is what's missing. Like, I, I think of the, when we watched Halo, Kenobi, Wheel of Time. Yeah. None of them had anything above the first layer. Exactly. They, they were so hollow, two-dimensional. There was low complexity. Yeah. And the, the interrelational drama was so surface-level crap. Where they, And these actors are so, so good. Like, when they <laughs> cry or get angry, you feel it. There's this moment you were talking about with heroism as well, where mm. um, they're working, the, the two sisters end up working at the startup together, but they've got yeah. their own little companies that they're working at. So the startup's mm. just like a, it's a co-working space. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the one sister, they're having this little rivalry because mm. one's successful and one isn't. Um, and the one that isn't, this guy comes in and says, hey, uh, where's this other company, your sister's company? Mm. Um, and she goes, oh, in the next room. And that sister company is working on this like AI security system, basically replacing all these workers. And mm -hmm. it's one of the workers coming in to egg her. <laughs> and so the sister says, oh, this is the studio, you know, where my sister yeah. works. And the guy goes, great, and starts piffing eggs at her. Mm -hmm. And so the, what the sister does protects the one getting egged. <laughs> and she works with all these, like, nerdy programmer guys. Yeah. And when they leave their studio to go to the sister's one, the guys are like, he had eggs. Why would, why would he have eggs? <laughs> and in the moment the guy piffs the egg, all the guys <laughs> tackle him and say, like, you're getting out of here. And I'm just like, these are like skinny, dorky, nerdy guys <laughs> who when it matters, stepping up. Love it. Right into action. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, you feel it. Heroism. That's like me with Mr. Bates in Downton Abbey. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, he steps up and does these amazingly self-sacrificing things, sometimes to a fault, but it's just like, mm legend, you know? Yeah. Two other things I want to mention with these K-dramas that are brilliant. Yeah. One, the emphasis on family. Oh, yeah. Whenever there is troubles um, in, in the family or someone does something like telling the parents, mm -hmm. every single time that it's found out, the parents yeah. are like, I wish you'd told me. And I, I suspect, because Korea is actually a very traditional country, yeah. the father has a very strict role, the wife has a very strict role, but they go out of their way to fulfil those roles. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the dad is like, you behaved? Get the belt? Whacking <laughs> son, you don't have to do that. You're just and the mother afterwards says, "How are you feeling? You okay? <laughs> okay, good." And it's the more gentle thing. Your father will be alright. He's just a bit mad. Like he'll settle down. Like it, and it's so traditional. There's that, and mm -hmm. just the core of basically, mum saying, "I wish you told me this because as mm -hmm. family, we support each other, we look mm -hmm. after each other." Don't get confused. Yeah. Like, like there's times where they say, "Don't be a Westerner. Don't be individualism." Like, <laughs> I, I kind of agree in these days. Like, you stick with your family like, and we will support you. Oh you sacrifice for each other, and in the end, it brings you, yeah. lifts you all up. Reject modernity, embrace tradition. Yeah. And Korea is like they're the tradition. Like, yeah, reject the West. Their, yeah. their version is reject the West, embrace Korea. It's like yeah. I kind of agree. I do. I do. I do agree. <laughs> um, that and the way in which they deal with romance. It took seven episodes, an hour and 20 minutes long each, mm -hmm. for uh, romance to hold hands. <laughs> there was so much build-up. Like, you see now in, you know... In yeah, first date there. They're hooking, hooking up. up. Yeah. Well, not even that. They hook up first and they yeah. go, oh, what's your name? Oh, yeah. Like, in Wheel of Time, that happened. They're like... I know! They, they, they <laughs> got to know each other and after they did the deed. We kind of mentioned that in, I think, one of the other videos we filmed recently, but that's harmful to society. Yeah. Where, where, where unwanted pregnancy is uh, making lives really hard for people and, and stuff. And uh, it's a... It's a these relationships need to be treated seriously, approached mm. seriously, and uh, entered into when 
Yeah. When you're ready. And, and media actually helps do that. Like, Friends, I think, was actually quite damaging in, like, trying to promote hookup culture, yeah. where all these people are just sleeping with each other and not showing near the real-world consequences of such stuff. Mm. And and when these relationships end, they usually end far more worse damaging, than yeah. there's like, oh, we're still friends and, you know, I'll let you sleep with someone else. But, yeah, that, um, I, I was... We, we, me and my wife get shocked when there's a sex scene in a Korean K-drama. <laughs> and there there was one in Hometown Charger Chat at the very end. It was the most tasteful, <laughs> beautiful... F- like, I was like... They, they weren't being at all disgusting. They were mm. showing more of the, like, care and love that would actually be yeah. in a relationship like that. And I was so I was taken aback. I was like... Pausing there. I'd, wow. In one of the early drafts of The Wheel of Time, episode one... They wanted a sex scene with Matt, and it was a girl on his shoulders, legs wrapped around, oh. with a dress over his head. That's the type of relationship they wanted to promote and uh, and depict and stuff. In Wheel of Friggin' Time, in the Two Rivers, where it's supposed to, in the books, is this really conservative culture where... Yeah. Oh my goodness. It didn't make it through to the final. Thank but goodness. the fact that the showrunner wanted to put that in... Go, it goes to show you where Shocking. his head is at. But yeah, just so and it, they even had like an explicit like thing where this scene will like be focused on the woman's pleasure and stuff like that. And uh, it's all about the feminist agenda with it and stuff. And uh, nothing wholesome, uh, like you know, no. it's just about sex because sex. Yeah, because because yeah. lusts and desires. Yeah. But man, in these head dramas, when they hold hands, when they, they kiss, they... it is the peak romance yeah. point. They use it like how they would... I'm trying to think of an example. You know, when, when you think of um, musicals, they sit, they, they yeah. dance when yeah. it's at the peak. They like, fights. The, the pinnacle part is yeah. the very end. The, the other part I kind of want to... It's like, I can easily tell. They treat sex relations with the respect that they should be treated with in the modern day. In the modern day... It's like going bowling or going to the movies where it's just this fun thing you can do. Yeah. But the lie about the modern media is that it doesn't translate to the real world, that this fr- engagement, right, is actually deeply psychologically affecting, okay? You can't just do it flippantly and then move on, especially girls. Girls can't do it flippantly and move on. Mm. But that action actually builds an emotional kind of, like, connection. And then when it's just treated... Like, it means nothing and people move on. It can be very psychologically damaging. But that's what the media is portraying. Mm. It's just fun, flippant, do whatever you want. And then they completely ignore the real world serious reality that, hey, this is the act that creates babies, okay? Yeah. Um, and in the media, no one's... It's always, like, even without protection, wheel of time, like, where is their protection and everything like that? They're just going at it. And in reality, this makes life even with contraception, that's not a guaranteed thing. It still often happens, and it may, it encourages people to just do it. And then, what's the result? Some awful things. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, and there's, uh, you know, there's the whole abortion debate in the modern days. I'm concerned. You can d- probably guess where I land on that. Wouldn't even be a debate if people were sh- just treating this with more responsibility. I don't know if this will get cut, but I remember seeing a video of a lady saying, What? So you want me to be have, have standards of who I sleep with? You want me to... Uh, and I have to second guess who I'm going to go around and sleep with. And the guy in the room was like, y- Yeah. <laughs> that's what you should do. You should have standards and like, maybe like, not do that. Like, I was like, you going to second guess who your like, pe- like, child's be- like, father's going to be? <laughs> yeah, you probably should do that. Right, you should be more based. It's like when she says, What? You mean I should have standards of who I sleep with? It's like, the answer should be... Yes, you whore. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, if you that's if you don't have standards with who you're sleeping with, yeah, both male and female, you're a freaking whore. Grow up and <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, I have to think of who's going to father my children. Oh my goodness, that's how just they throw it away. And I have to mention because I find it funny, right? One of the responses to the abortion debate that's going thing is that people on the very far left are like, all right, to punish them, we just won't have sex with them. How's that? And all the conservatives are like. Oh, good. Finally, yes. That's Finally, what we've been we've asking back for. Because we like, this is reality, right? We wouldn't even ask for that. Women are, are the gatekeepers of sex and relationships, okay? And it, it, the reason why it falls in is because men have a higher sex drive. They're more willing to engage in it. And so the one who has more control and restraint is the now the gatekeeper. That's how it evolves that way. Mm. But what I hate in the modern media and everything is that 
By trying to subvert this, they are robbing women of an incredible amount of power that they should possess. Okay, this is an inherent thing, an inherent thing of power and influence that women have if they control and treat themselves with respect. What I have is something of value that I will only allow someone to get access to if you earn it. And by doing that, you can make men earn it. That is incredibly influential. And it makes men better as well, by the way. It makes men commit. It's, it's just what you want. Give it away for free. You're just letting men... Be, like, and women need to improve that. Men need to improve. And it's and men should not be this way. They need to be taught that they just... like Men need to be taught abstinence as well. But the, the, the influence and power women have in being able to control this is one of the ways that can help men... Mm. pull up and friggin' grow up and treat this stuff with the respect and, and consideration it deserves. Um, but the media's lying about us, so all of that, robbing women of that power, and then the fact that they were saying, well, we just won't, won't give it out for free, and I'm like, thank you! About bloody time! <laughs> That's all it took? Yeah. <laughs> You're not convincing us otherwise, women. But look, that's the extreme ones on the left. There's a lot of great women who understand this. And yeah. Hold the line, keep it up. <laughs> but but yeah, it's go... great. Korea actually has these values still, and these values are important. And it's important to be depicted in media because media is downstream from culture uh, or upstream. I forget which one, but it's the one. It's influences. Okay. Mm. This is important. It's all about the normalizing thing. Yeah. If you can normalize these standards for kids, and, and especially even young kids, teenagers, and everything that's growing up, they they will naturally more likely. Follow that. It's not a guarantee, but it gives higher chances, and that's what we should hope and desire. And that's why parenting is so important, but also the media. This is why we're trying to do a Night's Watch pushback and everything, because setting what is normal. Like back in the day, right, when sex was treated so seriously in media, especially look, look in the like 50s and early media and stuff yeah. like that, where no sex outside of marriage, real life you know, stuff, it reflected in society, okay? But, yeah. I think the last thing I just remembered I want to bring up with, with the K-dramas is the humour. Mm -hmm. I am so sick of Marvel humour. Like, <laughs> Disney humour, like that Thor, Love and Thunder, that oh, is was the most... Like, cringe. Because it was, it was a joke and it was funny because that's to mm -hmm. be a joke and it was funny. Yeah. The one thing I love about, uh, my, my favourite humour I think is situational humour. It's not funny for the characters, yeah. it's funny for those watching. Yeah. And so... The, it makes it so much... It, it, it doesn't feel forced. Mm -hmm. And as a viewer, you get to enjoy it. But the characters, sometimes they laugh at it if you're, you know, yeah. if they're watching as a third party. But for me, the funniest mm -hmm. moments are when someone says or does something because it's funny because you're yeah. a watcher. So I wonder if you, what you're trying to describe is... Uh, or or if it has this... Because one of my favourite types of humour and what I, feel, what I feel is some of the highest bar humour is character-based humour. Mm. where characters do things that are in line with their character. It makes sense, but it comes out sometimes in interesting, surprising ways. But when it's a surprise, but then it happens. And so obviously that's so in line with their character, it can be hilarious. Yeah. So one of the best examples that I can think of at the moment is actually in Star Trek. So Captain Picard, he is a reserved man. He has areas in which makes him uncomfortable and he's uncomfortable with kids and he has this air of authority and everything like that. It's hard for him to be vulnerable and mm. open and everything like that. And so um, there is a character in it, which is it's Deanna Troy's mother. I think it's like Swana Troy or something like that. But she is this massive flirt. And so and she constantly tries to flirt with Picard. And he is so he hates it so much. And one, you know it's so in line with his character because he's a reserved, authoritative figure, and there's this woman just breaking right through that, getting right into, like, it's hilarious already, that, right? Um, and so it has this setup where you understand this dynamic, and one of the funny, I just, I laughed my head off because it was just so beautiful, right? Beautifully set up, is that Carrie says, I hear with Deanna Troy, and Deanna Troy mentions that her mother is visiting or anything like that, um, uh, and so you find out Deanna Troy's mother is visiting. Cuts to a new scene, and it's the scene where you see down the corridor, and a door opens to a turbo lift. And this happened, This is a common scene in Star Trek. Door opens, and car uh, the character is, so it sets the scene out, thing, door opens, nothing happens, and it holds the shot for a while. And then you see Captain Picard poke his head out. <laughs> Just like that. And it was a friggin' river. I love it. I was like, you didn't need some cringe line or anything like that. It was 
beautiful character humor. I laugh my head off because you know he's, he's like you know the the woman's here, we're here like, <laughs> and is this strong like authoritative figure just like scared like like it was so good. That is. That is talent right there. That's talented writing, mm. understanding character and working with it in just great ways. And it takes different people mm -hmm. through the process to make that funny. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just write the script and it be funny. You can't yes. have the actors do, you know, they're going to have a Kiwi accent and be mm -hmm. funny. It's like mm -hmm. you have to have that in the script. Yes. The situation was funny. The acting needs to pull it off. Yes. Th there are layers of complexity yeah. to make it work. And you need a lot. Like, look at the, um, uh, you know, Picard example. You need to understand his character really well. And also you need to understand the dynamics of, all right, authority, strength, what he is presenting, everything like that, what is making him uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, and then also, why would this be funny? Because it, it's a circumstance where you see kind of behind the mask and everything like that, but it's so in line. It, 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 what, like complexity, layers of complexity to understand this. But when you do, it's it's the best. It's, it, that is like truly good writing right yeah. there. And that's the type, like, that's my favorite. I think Brandon Sanderson does some of that really well, like really well in his writing. That's one of the reasons I enjoy it. I enjoy a lot of his humor. And some is more lowbrow, but some is like really good complex character stuff, and it's very good. But yeah, look, K dramas mm -hmm. are fantastic. I'm mm -hmm. gonna. It, I know they're great because, like a good book or game, for me mostly, there's the experience I've had. When it's over, I feel empty. <laughs> And I sit back and I go, nothing can fill the void that just I was left with because that was so good. Mm -hmm. And I have I have not had that with any of the modern media in, in Western mm -hmm. culture for... Yeah, only really one thing recently, because the other um, reaction to media is you feel, it ends and you're feeling uplifted. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, you, you come out of experiencing that in a better mood than when you went into it. And that's when yeah. a sign of great success in it. And it was Top Gun Maverick for me. Like, one of the only things recently. Um, uh, of course, you watch old things, and there are other things I've, I've enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, but Top Gun Maverick had an amazing... Like, like you walk out of the theatre and you went, like, oh, oh, feel good. great. I feel great, you know? Mm. So, and also, just just want to let, let, you know, Kathleen Kennedy know that those episodes were an hour long each. <laughs> and there was 13 of them. And so if Korea can do it with dramas, I think you can do it with Star Wars. So, I'm, I'm not going to hold a... Yeah. I'm not going to give her any slack. And You're like, talking about uh, Kenobi. If yeah, I Kenobi. Have... And, uh, what was it? Six episodes? Six episodes, yeah. about 45 minutes. One was like even half an hour, I yeah. think. Yeah, but... Lazy. And, and I'm not just saying, you know, fill time for the sake of filling time. Packed fact, with story. Oh, so much. Yeah. So much story. <laughs> and because there's so much time and story in it, they are able to weave them in and out so well. And they the pacing mm. of them is brilliant. Mm. Like... I'm going to keep watching them. Uh, uh, that's the thing. Korea is actually making good stuff. Yeah. There's really good stuff. Uh, stuff on my list and other things that... And thank goodness. And there's also some really good anime as well. <sighs> they get to eat Hollywood's lunch. Uh, if they're Hollywood... Oh, the Hollywood's not learning from it at all. And only occasionally, rarely do we get something half decent. Yeah. I've started Terminal List. That's actually pretty good at the moment. Um, yeah. What's the other good thing? Oh, yeah, Reacher was right. Arcane. So there's these... Small little gems now and then, little but specs. But the, like you compare that to the consistently good stuff. Now I have a sister-in-law who's Korean, and I was mentioning talking to this for her, and she was like agreeing. But then she said, "But it's more recently. Some of the old stuff is really bad, <laughs> like uh, really low budget, really bad. It's like more recently they, I don't know, the effort is just skyrocketed. Yeah, they and there's incredible actors mm -hmm. um, who like. Um, so the the two shows I mentioned, the, the one of the main actors, he is in both of mm -hmm. those completely different characters. Yeah. One, he's a very quirky, funny, silly guy. Mm -hmm. Other one, he's very st serious and stoic and what. Mm. I forget half the time that it's the same person. That's just great. That's amazing acting Quintessential as well. sign of a great actor, right? Like, I, like mm. everything I've seen in these shows, and look, there's some shows we've started and we just mm -hmm. haven't picked up on it just because the characters aren't the thing. Mm. Or, you know, I'm not saying everything that Korea mm. makes is amazing, but there have been some amazing gems mm -hmm. who... Man, I want to buy them in Blu-ray just so I have them when the the apocalypse comes. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> amazing stuff, and it just gives me a bit of hope that somewhere in the world there's good stuff being made. 
And when the bad stuff is made, it needs to be called out, uh, and we try and do both. Celebrate the good. Unfortunately, there's more bad coming, especially in our most beloved properties. But we want to celebrate the stuff that is good, and we will try. We try to do that when we when we find it and see it. So there we go. K, K dramas and Korea media. Check it out. There's a lot of good stuff there. And do subs, please. Don't do dubs. Don't do, oh, like I'm telling you. <laughs> See, I'm a, I'm a dub person. I know, I know it's bad. I, but... I've tr I tried it one day. I was like, can I just like... The go... delivery. Uh, yeah, so they, oh, they, they spoke English in one of the ones I watched as well. And, oh. <laughs> Actually, I think it was so bad, but it was so good because of how well they got the real world. <laughs> because it was this boardroom meeting and this Korean guy's like, yeah, in Korea, the names are reversed. It's the last name first. And this white guy goes... Wow, okay, write that down. It's really important. We need to know that with uh, to be culturally appropriate. Like, they <laughs> nailed. They nailed the, the, the American cringe. I love it. Koreans are now parodying like, their, their stupidity in Western culture. Oh. <laughs> we deserve it. Yeah. Totally deserve it. But yeah, if, you, if you're going to go watch it, please just do subtitles and, <laughs> and just sit back and enjoy. Because, oh. Mm. It, it, like, other stuff I watch, I know we're meant to sign off, but... It feels like a chore to watch through things. Mm -hmm. But every time I sit down to watch those shows, every scene and cut is just a good time and an adventure, and I just <laughs> sit back and relax and enjoy. And it's like, oh, <laughs> where is that Yeah, in, in our superhero action flicks? I know. Uh, it's, it's depressing. But uh, it goes to show you then that there is stuff to watch, and until next time, stay watchful.